This video is sponsored by Box, the online technology store. Visit box.co.uk for the best deals on TVs, soundbars, and all your other technology needs. Hello everyone, Vincent Hill from HDTV Test here. Because I've stopped providing my professional calibration service for the foreseeable future, I'm trying my hand at reviewing a soundbar. My contacts in the retail industry tell me that one of the most common questions from customers following the purchase of a television is, what soundbar should I buy? Today, we're reviewing the LG SN11RG, which is the flagship soundbar from the South Korean brand for 2020. It includes a pair of wireless rear speakers with additional up-firing drivers to deliver a more authentic surround sound experience than the virtual surround processing found on many Dolby Atmos soundbars these days. Even though the rear speakers connect wirelessly to the main soundbar, they still need to be powered, and the power cables supplied by LG were only 1.5 meter long each, which can be fairly restricting considering the rear speakers have to be placed slightly behind you at both ends of your sofa. Of course, you can place a power extension cord in the middle between the two rear speakers, or buy longer figure of 8 cables yourself but we wished LG have supplied longer cables in the first place. Not the first time we've craved for more length. Talking of which, length is certainly not something the main soundbar is short of. Measuring 144cm end to end, it aligns perfectly with the width of a 65-inch TV. Assuming you have a TV cabinet that's wide enough to accommodate the soundbar without the ends hanging over the edge. The soundbar is only 63mm tall, which is discreet enough to avoid blocking the picture on screen. Here, I'm using the LG SN11RG with a 75-inch Sony ZH8 LED LCD, which sits on a pair of low-profile feet, and from a normal viewing distance, with my eye level aimed at the middle of the screen, I could still see the entire picture. Drivers on the soundbar unit, three are front-firing, left, right, and center. Two are up-firing, bouncing the projected sound off the ceiling for front height channels. Two more drivers are implemented on the sides of the soundbar, firing left and right to create reflected surround sound, so it's important to keep the path clear between the ends of the soundbar and the side walls for the best effect. Together with the wireless subwoofer and a pair of rear speakers with up-firing drivers, these make up a 7.1.4 surround sound system. The connections are found in a recessed compartment behind the soundbar unit, including two HDMI inputs that support 4K pass-through, as well as another HDMI port which supports eARC or enhanced audio return channel. There are some touch-sensitive buttons on top of the soundbar, and a front LED display which shows relevant information about the input source, volume, etc. The supply remote control is basic and nothing to phone home about, but contains important buttons to switch input sources, sound modes, and activate Google Assistant, among others. Installation was fairly straightforward. The wireless subwoofer and rear speakers on our review sample connected to the soundbar automatically without needing any intervention on my part although LG does provide instructions for manual pairing if the automatic connection failed. To get the best out of the LG SN11RG, two mobile apps need to be installed on your smartphone, namely Google Home and LG Wi-Fi speaker app. Google Home is necessary to establish a Wi-Fi connection on the soundbar, unlocking Google Assistant as well as streaming from Spotify, Google Music, YouTube, and Deezer. Perhaps more importantly, on our review unit, we needed to install the Google Home app first before the SN11RG could be detected by the LG Wi-Fi speaker app, which is essential to optimize the audio quality of the soundbar in a few ways. First up is AI room calibration, which plays a series of strange sounding tones to measure your room characteristics using the inbuilt microphone then adjust the audio settings to acoustically compensate for your environment. It takes only 15 seconds to complete, and based on our experience, 
we strongly suggest that you try it out. You get to listen to the before and after results before getting to choose whether to apply the optimization. In our case, running AI room calibration widened the soundstage and tightened the bass somewhat in our test room, so we were extremely grateful that such a quick and easy way to obtain this level of improvement without having to spend hours performing measurements and crawling on the floor. Another key setting available only in the LG Wi-Fi speaker app is the ability to adjust AV sync. Because we primarily used eARC on the SN11 RG together with the Sony ZH8, the audio came before the video out of the box, leading to noticeable lip sync delay, which fortunately could be corrected through the app. Otherwise, you can adjust the sound level for different channels, but mostly as a pair. For example, you can adjust the volume of both rear speakers together, but not just the left rear speaker, or just the right rear speaker. We didn't have a specific problem with this in our use case, but other owners may appreciate being able to adjust each individual channel to compensate for speaker distance and unit-to-unit -unit variation. Specific to our setup, we dropped the subwoofer level by minus 4 to rein in the bass, which was originally quite rumbly, intrusive and generally all over the place, and boosted the rear channels by plus 3 for an even more immersive surround sound experience. We loaded up some of our favourite Dolby Atmos scenes, and were immediately impressed by the spatial envelopment and dimensionality provided by the 7.1.4 system. We found that a volume of around 20 was required for the best immersion. As the chasing vehicles flew into view in Mad Max Fury Road, the roar of the engines sounded substantially realistic with an over-the-shoulder trajectory, a quality we've always found missing from soundbars using virtual Atmos processing. Chapter 2 of Ready Player One has a killer Atmos soundtrack, and again, the LG SN11RG did well here reproducing the revs of the engines and the deafening crashes all around us with an impressive degree of weightiness and immersion. As Parzival slid his DeLorean under the crashed trailer, the slamming shut of the gullwing door carried a distinct height effect from top to bottom. We did wish the coins being collected had a clearer clinking quality to them, and therein lies one of the minor weaknesses of the SN11RG. For all its expensive and enveloping soundstage, clarity and audio resolution was a bit lacking. In this opera scene from The Greatest Showman, the LG SN11RG projected Jenny Lin's voice with power and forwardness, and successfully captured the ambience of the audience, but we found ourselves craving for that bit more mellowness and less strain in her voice as she hit the crescendo. Next up, the opening scene from Baby Driver. Atmos mapping and sound steering were excellent in handling the floating vocals and instruments, capturing the madness of the moment as Baby sat waiting in the getaway Subaru WRX. The tempo was bass heavy, and even though the subwoofer could get loud at the low end, it sounded slightly unruly, lacking in definition and punch. How I would describe it is this. Let's say you were really really upset with someone face to face. You can shout loudly at them. You can grab them by the shoulders and shake them up. Or you can just punch them in the face and knock them out. And before you ask, no, I don't need anger management. But the base delivery of the LG SN11RG was exactly that. It could go loud and shake the room. But when you listen closely, the tightness, you know that sort of thumping bass that punches you right in the chest, just wasn't there. The rear speakers also didn't seem to trigger LFE activity from the subwoofer, judging from the shot from Ready Player One where there's supposed to be a 360 degree low whoosh sound effect. Let's move on to music, which should be considered supplementary since it's unlikely someone's gonna splash 1500 quid on a 7.1.4 Atmos soundbar just to listen to music. The LG SN11RG can play music over Chromecast, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi from a list of streaming services, as well as high-res audio from the USB port. It sounded decent, and here, 
we preferred using the AI Sound Pro preset which, to our ears, struck the best tonal balance between vocal clarity and bass oomph. Let's sum up. The LG SN11RG doesn't come cheap. At £1,500, any audiophile worth his or her salt will tell you that you would get substantially better value for money by going down the AV receiver and separates route, which will deliver superior dynamics and resolution. But soundbars like the SN11RG fill a very relevant niche in the wider consumer market. Unlike separates, it's a cinch to set up. There are no wires everywhere, and it can blend into most living rooms in a discreet fashion that won't upset your other half. Among soundbars, the LG SN11RG is one of the most well-specced. Wireless rear speakers with upfiring drivers, support for high-res audio, Dolby Atmos and DTSX, built-in Google Assistant, eARC support, as well as 4K pass-through with Dolby Vision, although not HDR10+. But genuinely, HDR10 Plus doesn't seem to be gaining any traction compared with Dolby Vision, so we don't think it's a big loss at all. While it lost out to its rivals in terms of outright clarity and bass definition, the LG SN11RG delivered an expensive soundstage and the most immersive Dolby Atmos effect we've heard from a soundbar package, and so it earns our recommended award. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HTTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.